Hello everybody. Today we're going to go over a quick demonstration on how to install the Android SDK, um, oftentimes called the Eclipse ADT bundle. Uh, fortunately Android or slash Google has put together everything in a nice little bundle. Uh, so all you have to do is download it and run and then install some additional components. Um, the system I'm running on is running Mountain Lion and it is a 64-bit requirement and the 64-bit is required um, for getting this to install. So if you don't have a 64-bit system, you won't be able to install the new bundle that they have. It doesn't mean you can't install Eclipse and the SDK environment, but you can't use their fancy new bundle, which makes things tons easier. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, fire up your browser and um, go to Google or wherever and type in get Android SDK. And that is going to take you to the link that you want to get. So if you notice right here, it says download the SDK uh, and the ADT bundle for Mac. Um, you can come down here and download for other platforms. Um, and if you notice for Mac OS X, it is 64-bit only. So you have to have a 64-bit system in order for this to work. Um, the regular Eclipse will work on 32 or 64-bit. So go ahead and hit the ADT bundle. Uh, you are going to have to agree to the licensing term, which you should. And we'll go ahead and hit download the bundle. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and save the file. So we'll just do save and it should go automatically into the downloads folder on your hard drive. Uh, fortunately I have a pretty fast connection here so we will just give this a second to download. And then I will show you how easy it is to get the Eclipse environment up and running on your Mac OS X system. Um, in this case, running Mountain Lion. Um, it's quite cool the way they've done it now. They've put everything into a single bundle. You don't have to install anything or you know run any weird programs or anything like that. You do have to bring up the SDK Manager to make sure you have the APIs that you want downloaded and installed. And of course, you have to configure the emulators. Um, but all that's good. It's not a problem. So we'll do the demo on that as well. Uh, we are just about done with the download. Okay, and the download is done. So if we come over to Finder and go into our downloads, you notice that we have the ADT bundle for Mac now. Uh, you can double click on this and it opens up the archive utility and it will extract everything to the ADT Bundle Mac x86-64 folder. And we'll just go ahead and let that unzip for a second. Uh, definitely takes uh, several hundred megabytes. So make sure you have some space on your system. You're going to need additional space as well for your uh, the APIs that you download and any emulators that you set up. So now I'm going to go ahead and rename this um, it's a bundle. I'm going to call it Android Development. And then all we need to do now is just take this whole thing and you can drag it over into the applications. And come back into applications. Double click or click on uh, Android Development and Eclipse and uh, you can click on Eclipse and it will now launch it. Okay, so if you, this is good, I wasn't expecting this. Uh, it says my security preferences only allow installation of apps from the Mac App Store and identified developers. So we'll hit OK. Um, so let's come over to System Preferences and see what we can find here. Um, I'm totally doing this on the fly, not entirely sure where to look. So let's go to security and privacy. Um, let's see. So we'll unclick that. We'll authenticate. Um, let's go ahead and do anywhere. And this is going to make it less secure, but in this case we know that it's okay. Um, and then go ahead and click the lock here and 
close that, come back, and let's see if we can run Eclipse. It's saying it's downloaded from the internet, and yes it is, so we will say it's okay to open it. So I'm sure somebody's going to have some issue with me changing the security settings like that, because um, it does make it less secure, obviously. It's basically saying you can run applications from anywhere, as opposed to just the Apple Store or any other trusted developer. Um, so just be careful with that. So now it's asking for a workspace. You can go ahead and uh, say that you want to use this as the default and not worry about asking again. And hit OK. And it's going to continue launching the developer tools. So this is your uh, initial view here. It's asking if you would like to contribute us usage statistics. Hit yes if you'd like to. You can hit no if you don't. Finish. So the first thing I do is I go ahead and just kill out this window because we don't really need it. Um, and then this is the view that you are going to get to begin with. Um, you know, lots of stuff here, and we're not going to go over everything. Um, but I will show you how to customize it really quickly in the way that I do it. Um, I, and this is for BuzzTouch users, so you know you can do it whatever way you want. Um, I get rid of this outline pane. Um, I get rid of the declaration pane because I don't tend to need that in the Java doc pane. Get rid of that, um, and I will come up to Window. Um, show view and I will do other and I'll pick Android and I pick uh, logcat this is super important because uh, because you're going to want to use this one quite often so go ahead and hit OK and logcat gives you all kinds of debug messages that you're going to want to uh, to provide to people when you're having problems so these are those are pretty much the three panes that I use when I'm doing my work with Buzz Touch applications. So now you want to come over here to Window. You want to do your Android SDK Manager. And this is where you're going to download the APIs that you're going to use to compile your application with. It's going to go out and get a whole list of everything that's available. Um, at the very least, you need the Android SDK tools and the Android SDK platform tools. And those will have already been installed. Um, so this is where you can choose whatever you want. Uh, the minimum requirement for a BuzzTouch app is Android, or sorry, is API 8. Uh, notice this one here. So this is the minimum one, and actually if you compile against this one, you're going to pretty much hit about 98% of the market that's out there. Uh, but remember, it has to be the Google APIs so that you're going to compile against if you're going to use the maps. Um, so you want to grab both of these and hit... Um, so I selected the SDK for Android 2.2 2 .2 in the Google APIs, uh, Google API 8. You can select any of these other ones that you want. Let's just go ahead and install these two packages. Um, so we want to do an accept all and then do an install. And you'll notice now it's downloading the SDK platform. Uh, this does take a few minutes or quite a while, depending on your particular internet connection. So uh, there may be times when you may go out and grab a cup of coffee when you're doing this. Uh, it's actually going really fast now, so that's kind of cool. So it's uh, downloaded the API and the Android APK or SDK there. And now it's uh, downloading the Google ones. It's already installed the Android one. So... Uh, we're actually doing pretty well here. Let's give it one second to finish. Or maybe take a few extra seconds. Uh, so you may see some issues up there, but I believe these are all okay at the moment. Let's hit close. I'm going to close out of this. Now what you're going to want to do is you're going to actually you want to exit out of um, the ADT now because it needs to be able to pick up everything that you just installed and the only way it can do that is do it on a, a restart. So actually what I'm also going to do here is I'm going to move this down there so I always have it. Let's go ahead and kill that. So we'll start Eclipse again. <coughs> Take a second to launch. And now, the 
to test that we actually have the API as we think, we're going to go ahead and set up our virtual device manager. So go ahead and click that. And it brings up a new window. We're going to create a new virtual device. Uh, let's just call this one BuzzTouch API 8. To kind of keep track of things. Device. Got a whole bunch of devices you can choose from. Um, so why don't we go ahead and we'll pick the Nexus uh, tablet, just for the heck of it. Uh, the target. So we know we got what we were looking for here, which is Google APIs 8. And then um, you can put, you know, whatever you want on here. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave the defaults and hit. Uh, so if you do, if you click snapshot, it will actually create a snapshot of the emulator and theoretically it's supposed to make uh, launching the emulator faster the next time that you do it. So you can pick, you know, choose it if you want to. It will of course take up a little bit more disk space. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. And it's gone ahead and created the virtual device for us. So um, that is all there is to setting up the uh, Eclipse ADT and the Android SDK on Mac OS X. Uh, basically you download the software unzip it, launch Eclipse, change the security settings if you need to, go to the Android SDK Manager, select and download and install the SDKs that you want, go ahead and set up your emulator, Android emulator, and from that point on you can um, import your project like you would on any other operating system. Um, so there you go, hope you have fun. Happy app making, and be sure to post any questions that you have on the Bus Touch forums. Thank you.